it's Marion here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be responding to Peter Santanello, I hope I said his name right, Santanello's video, going inside the Hasidic Jewish Orthodox communities in New York. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit that red subscribe button down below. My name is Marion and I make videos about being a mom and being a Jewish mom, so I hope you guys like this one. And definitely let me know in the comments what you thought of Peter's videos and going inside the Hasidic community. Okay, so let's jump in. So I watched Peter's whole series. I absolutely love the folks he found to um, take him around the Hasidic communities. I love Shloyma, I love Malki. I thought they were fantastic finds in the Hasidic community and they did such a good job of taking him around and explaining things to him. So I just personally wanna kind of thank them for um, opening up that way and making those videos and thank Peter as well. So let's jump into it. I wanna talk about the differences between the Hasidic communities that Peter highlighted at Borough Park and other places in New York versus a typical Jewish community like the one I'm part of, um, as well as what my connection is or how I know what I know, what I'm gonna be talking to you guys about um, and how I feel about those Hasidic Orthodox communities. So let's begin with how I know what I know. <laughs> so Judaism has many different branches, communities, sects, however you want to describe them. But there's definitely different groups who practice Judaism in their own way. And each of them think that they're right and think that it's the way forward and the way that Judaism should be practiced. By and large, all Jewish people believe that all Jews are Jews. So if you were born a Jew, if you converted to Judaism, you're Jewish. There are some communities and the super, super, hyper, ultra, ultra Orthodox religious ones who believe that unless you had a, you know, Orthodox conversion, um, unless you're following Judaism the way that they want and describe it as it should be, that you're not following the true path. But that aside, I would say that the majority of Jewish people are welcoming, inclusive, and very understanding that everyone has their own levels of religious observance and reasons behind that. So for me, I have direct family members who are part of Hasidic communities. Um, I have been to those Hasidic communities. I've spent Shabbats in those homes. I am friends with people who are Hasidic and ultra, ultra Orthodox, so I very much feel as though I know those communities well, although I'm not part of them and have never been part of them. I will say that what I found most interesting about Peter's videos is when the people in them talk about the level of content and happiness that they have because they're closed off from the outside world. This is especially true in Maki's video when she talks to her friend who doesn't have a smartphone and she says to her it was almost like a drug, like giving up an addiction and that she's so much happier without it. The other time where this was really brought to life was when Maki talked about the current situation and how because Jewish people in the Hasidic world believe that life is in God's hands and if God wants you to pass away from an illness or God wants you to survive it, that's what will come to pass, that all of the anxiety <laughs> that people in um, the world have, and people especially who maybe were already kind of anxious beforehand, who have now totally closed themselves off, or you know are panicked to go into stores and things like that, that they're living with such stress and anxiety that it's unhealthy, which I totally get. And she was saying how by and large, the Orthodox community, like many of them suffered from the virus. They got it all right at the beginning. So what Malki said is that from an Orthodox Hasidic perspective, um, they believe in being responsible. They believe in medicine and doctors and all of those things, but that they, in the end, that things are in God's hands. So they're not going to completely shift their life 100% the way many others have done because in their minds, what will come to pass will come to pass. So I thought it was interesting how much they've been able to relieve that anxiety um, about the current situation, but also just in general, if you believe that will ever, whatever's gonna happen to you will happen to you, it takes the pressure off. And that's how Malky describes it, that you no longer have to feel like you're in control of everything and feel the pressure of that. So I thought that was a really beautiful interpretation. 
Okay, so those spiritual aspects aside, I want to talk about the differences between a Hasidic community and just a regular Jewish community. So for me, I do live in a Jewish area in Washington, D.C. There are lots of Jewish people around me, and you'll find that Jews tend to live in places where there are other Jews. Unlike the Hasidic community, where they're literally in a section of blocks and everyone is Jewish, um, in other parts of the U.S., Jewish people will definitely congregate, especially around cities and things like that, because because part of Jewish life is going to synagogue, having a Jewish community, and it's very hard to be Jewish if you live all by yourself, like on a ranch in Oklahoma kind of thing, because it's required in Judaism that you actually have 10 people together to pray, which is very hard to do if you're living all by yourself without a Jewish community. It's also really hard to have kosher food available, to have all the kosher items, to have places to go to celebrate the holidays. So it's very common for Jews to live in the same areas, but unlike a Hasidic community, they might be within an entire you know, big city or areas and neighborhoods within the city rather than all compacted into one. Another interesting part about the Hasidic community, which say Peter shows in his videos, is everyone shops from the other kosher or Jewish stores and sellers. So they'll all go to the kosher market, they'll go to the kosher um, video store, he showed that, the wig store, the clothing store. And although they'll sometimes, you know, buy things from Zara, like she mentioned, primarily they're going to the Orthodox clothing store. And in that way, it enriches the whole community because they support each other. So I would say in my world, in my experience of Judaism, there's a little bit of that in the sense that if you know of a good recommendation to send to somebody, um, often it's another Jewish person because you're close with them, you grew up with them, and you're like, oh yeah, my friend so-and-so is a tailor. She's the best tailor, and suddenly all the Jewish people are going to that tailor. So it kind of works out similarly, of course, not to the same degree, and those shops that um, might have a lot of Jewish people who um, purchase from them will also be very open and you wouldn't know if you walked in there that it was a Jewish store, you'd see plenty of people, non-Jewish people there, but it just so happens that because of the close-knit community, because of word of mouth, that there are similarities in that everyone goes to, you know, this store that happens to be owned by a Jewish person. Something that I kind of laughed about on that note is that I'm part of a Jewish mom's Facebook group and we're always sending each other recommendations about things that are not Jewish, like a cake baker or something like that, not even a kosher one, because not everyone in the group keeps kosher. But again, you just kind of share in those recommendations and build that sense of community. Another interesting aspect of community that Shlomo talked about was about how the community takes care of one another. And when he asked Peter, like, name any social um, harm, and I'll explain to you how the Hasidic community takes care of it. And Peter asked him about, drug abuse and homelessness, that kind of thing. I would say in the Jewish community, outside of Hasidism, the same is true. We also have organizations that specifically cater to needs within the community like that. And again, they're very open to people who aren't Jewish as well. They're very inclusive. It's not, again, the same degree of, um, we're only here to serve these 10 blocks kind of thing, but you will find specifically Jewish resources, again, for all of those social harms. I'm thinking right now of a domestic abuse um, hotline. If you go into any synagogue, like conservative reform, you'll see their um, information in all the bathrooms. Like if you're experiencing domestic abuse, call this hotline and it's a Jewish service. So in that sense, the Jewish community does try to take care of each other. I would say the thing that was most different when it comes to Hasidic Jews versus not Hasidic Jews, aside from how they look, which is probably the most obvious one in that, but this ties to it, is that within the Jewish community, because we're not all living in the same you know, four blocks, because we're not all dressing the same and very tightly knit together in that way, there's a lot more individualism and a lot more freedom to express yourself, to be yourself, and to live a life that's not so tied into what the community is going to think of you. And Malki sort of talked about that in that there's Torah rules, which all Jews either observe or don't observe, but, you know, equally are given, um, versus community rules. Like she was explaining that in some communities you wouldn't be allowed to wear leopard print. Not that the Torah forbids that, but that that community has interpreted that that's not modest. I would say within the Jewish world and the conservative reform communities, that sense of a community making those rules um, on governing your life doesn't exist in the same way. 
but again, there are little bits of those kind of things. So just as an example, you'll hear phrases like, oh, Jews don't do that kind of thing. Um, and that can really range in what that covers and you know but they'll be sort of a little bit derogatory phrases like oh that's really goyesha goyesha meaning like oh that's what non-jews would do so um i would say that there's definitely an aspect of the community rules um but it's definitely to a much much less degree and there's a lot higher tolerance and acceptance and a lot of just there's not the same level of caring about that. It's not that the community thrives or lives or dies based on if everyone's following the same sort of socially accepted things or not. My final point of difference is that one of the most signature aspects of the Hasidic community that's so fascinating to people outside of it is how they dress because they look so different you know, from the other New Yorkers around them. And I would say that that's a huge difference from the other Jewish communities. Whereas part of the core beliefs of the conservative reform movement is to be 100% within society. Now that might mean you wear a keep on your head. Um, some women do dress a bit more modestly and act more modestly, but by and large, the goal is to fit in and to look the same as others around you. So I would say that that's a really key difference in how the communities um, look and feel when you're around them. And one last key point of difference that I wanna talk about is that while we're all given the same Torah and it's up to interpretation, the Hasidic communities definitely are deferent to their rabbis. If the rabbi says that this is how the Torah is interpreted, by and large, they'll follow that interpretation. So for things like keeping Shabbat and what that means, so for example, for Passover, this is one where like the rules have gone to the extreme in some communities. Um, many rabbis have said that any sort of um, spices, even if they are not kosher or Passover spices, can't be used. That's very common in Orthodox communities. And those communities will follow those rules because if you don't, then you can't have anyone else from another home come in to your home on Passover and your store if it's selling you know Jewish food or it's a restaurant it's not going to be frequented so there's a lot of ramifications for not following the rules whereas in other communities like mine you can not keep Pesach at all you can go totally kosher for Passover and it doesn't really have an effect on anybody else um, so in that way it invites more individualism but on the flip side there's also not the same sense of super tight-knit community that the Hasidic Jews have so that is my take on Peter Santinello's Inside the Hasidic Community videos on YouTube. I hope you guys liked it, found it interesting. If you have any more questions for me about some of the differences between the different groups of Jews and Judaism and how that all works, definitely leave them for me in the comments below. And if this is your first video, I really invite you to hit that red subscribe button and you can see all about my Jewish life. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.